Hey there, thank you for tuning in. If you're new to this channel, my name is Shania. And on this channel, you'll find loads of DIY tutorials. Some of the tutorials are of things that I made from scratch and others of the tutorials are things that I took and I just refashioned them. So in this tutorial, I will be showing you the first part of how to create a gingham dress for yourself. So in this part one, I'm gonna be breaking down how to actually make the pattern. Um, for the dress and then in the second part I'm going to be showing you how to actually transfer the pattern to the fabric and sew the actual pattern. In this tutorial I'm actually starting with the pattern that I made in this video here um, about how to create your own custom bodice block. The first thing that you want to do is you want to decide how long you want your dress to be. So you're going to start at your hip and you're going to measure the distance between your hip and the new hemline of your dress. You're going to record this measurement and you're going to transfer this measurement to your pattern block. But for example, if you decide that starting from your hip, you want your dress to be 10 inches longer, you're going to go to your pattern block and from the hip line near the center fold line, you're going to measure and mark 10 inches. From the seam, you're also going to measure 10 inches down and make a mark. And so when you connect those two marks, you'll create a horizontal line, which will be the bottom of your dress. Then essentially you wanna connect this horizontal line to the hip line. So you're basically, basically gonna draw a vertical line from each end of the hip line that connects all the way down to that new hemline. So you're gonna repeat these same steps for the back pattern of your dress. You're gonna to go to where the hip is and you're just going to round it out using a curved ruler and the reason why is because we don't want our dress to be pointy at the side we want it to smoothly fit our curve naturally so i like the back of my dress to be a little bit longer just to accommodate for my booty <laughs> Um, no, but seriously though, I like the back of my dress to be a bit longer just so that I feel more comfortable. So what I did was I added an extra half inch to the bottom of my hemline and from that extra half inch, I drew a curved line to connect from the center fold line to the side seam of the back pattern of the dress. Now this is optional, you don't have to do this, this is what you're pattern should look like for your dress. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go to our shoulder line and we're going to find the midpoint. So in my case, my shoulder line is four, so the midpoint would be two inches. I'm going to draw a vertical line that connects this midpoint to my bust point, like so. The next thing you want to do is you want to measure your bust radius. To find the bust radius, you basically just want to measure the distance from your nipple to where the underwire of your bra is. Now, if your bra doesn't have underwire, then it's basically the end of your bra. Starting from your bust point, you now want to use your bust point as a sort of anchor to create your bust radius circle. To create your bust radius circle, you're going to start from the bust point and you're going to take your measuring tape and you're going to mark off your bust radius so in my case four inches so I'm going to pivot my measuring tape bit by bit in the shape of a circle marking off four inches each pivot that I make from the bust point as my starting point connect the dots and you'll form your bust radius circle like so we want to contour the pattern the purpose of contouring the pattern is so that the final garment um, is sculpted to your breast. So instead of it going flat over your breast, it actually would hug your breast like this. Start at the point where your bust, your bust radius intersects with that mid shoulder line. From this intersection point, you're going to measure one inch on the left side and the right side of that intersection and you're going to make a mark it's easier to use a measuring tape because a measuring tape is a bit more flexible go to the bottom of your bus radius circle where the dart legs intersect with the circle now this right here is the dart legs this is what i mean when i say the dart legs 
So from this intersection, you're going to measure a half inch and make a mark on both sides of the dart legs, like so. You're going to connect each of those four marks that you just made to the bus point. So the two points at the top of the bus radius circle will be connected in the shape of a V to the bus point. And then the two points at the bottom of the bus radius circle will be connected to the bus point. So starting from the bottom of your X, so this is what I mean when I say the X. You're going to draw a line that connects to where the dart leg intersects with the waistline. So you will do this on both sides of the dart line. Round out the X along the part where the bus point is. And the reason why we're doing this is because this will be where your breast is. Draw a horizontal line that connects from the center front line to the left side of our X. And you can decide if you want it to be straight, if you want it to be a, like diagonal to, to create a V shaped neckline, Whatever shape you want to use is up to you. You're going to repeat the same step on the other side of the X. So on the right side of the X, down to the side seam of the pattern. So I ended up adding another line above my original line, just to be on the safe side. <laughs> cut out your pattern along the outer edge, and then after you cut out the outer edge, you want to cut out the space in between the dart. So here's a little guideline of where you should be cutting. Your front pattern for your dress should look like this. Take out your newly made front pattern and you want to place it on top of your back pattern block. You want to line up the lines, the chest line and the bust line of your front pattern to the chest line and the bust line of your back pattern. Make a mark of where the side seam of your front pattern block slopes down on top of the back pattern block. Then starting from the mark that you just made, you want to measure the distance between the mark you just made and the end of your chest line. So in my case, my distance that I got was a half inch. So you're gonna go back to the center fold of the pattern and starting from the chest line, you're gonna measure a half inch down. So it might not be a half inch for you. And then you're going to draw a horizontal line to connect those two marks that you just made. That horizontal line will be the neckline for the back of your pattern. It's not really a neckline, but can't think of the exact terminology, but you get what I mean. So because I want the back of my dress to have a sort of gathered effect, and I will be installing an elastic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra inch and a half to the side seam of the back of my pattern along that new line that we made. Then I'm gonna connect the end of this line to the side seam where my waistline is. And then you have created your back pattern and now you just need to cut out along the new lines and be careful when you're cutting. And remember to cut out the space inside of the dart as well. And when you're finished, you have your front pattern and your back pattern. Now it's time to transfer these patterns to the fabric so that we can actually begin to start sewing our dress. So you wanna take your fabric and you wanna fold it in half and you wanna make sure that once you've folded it in half, the wrong side is facing up. Place your patterns vertically on your fabric. It saves you time from having to fold the fabric again. So I definitely recommend that you place your patterns down in a vertical line on your fabric and then trace out your patterns. And oh yeah, so you also wanna remember that when you place your patterns down vertically onto your fabric, you wanna make sure that they're not too close together because you will need to add seam allowance around each pattern, so you don't want anything to, to overlap. And then you want to trace both of your patterns and you want to remember to trace every edge of the pattern, so that includes especially um, the outline of the darts and that's especially important because that will help us to sew the, the, the darts to create the actual structure of the dress so don't forget that part. After you've finished tracing the pattern you want to go ahead and add seam allowance to the bottom 
the side and the top of each pattern. You don't need to add seam allowance inside of the dart because the dart will be closed and sewn up later. That's in part two. Thank you guys so much for, for watching this video and check out part two after this one. See you in the next one. Ciao.